Hello baseball fans. This is part three of the tutorial series about out of the park baseball 18. My name is Markus Heinzon and I am the lead developer of the game. All right, today I want to talk about the basics of managing a team. So for this tutorial, I've signed up with the St. Louis Cardinals as the manager and general manager. So we are currently on the manager homepage and this screen basically shows you all the information that's vital and essential. And uh, currently in the screen resolutions, I have eight different squares and those are all widgets. So I can basically change the information of each of those squares. So for example, here I can display the team raster. All right. One area which I frequently pay attention to personally is the notes and task area. Uh, here you can see infos about the current owner goals and what's currently going on with your team and if there are certain things that need to be taken care of. For example, right now it tells me that there are players who can be activated from the disabled list, uh, the relief pitcher Tyler Lyons and that my primary dev chart versus right-handed pitcher has an open spot at shortstop and that my primary lineup against right-handed pitcher has an open spot at number seven. Okay, so, but before I take care of these, I will show you the control and autoplay settings. Okay, this is where you decide which areas of team management you want to take care of personally or where you want the AI to help you. Okay, so what I personally usually do is some low level tasks, for example, hiring coaches for my minor league teams. I usually set those to the AI because that's nothing I want to just worry about personally. So this is this one here, sign fire minor league personal. I just set this to my assistant GM. And I do the same for the minor league free agent signings and releases and also the promotions and demotions and the minor league lineups and dev charts and stuff. So I essentially set all my minor league control to the AI and uh, my assistant general manager. Okay, so we are set there. Let's return to the previous screen. I'll just go up here back. And I think the first thing I want to take care of is my uh, missing shortstop. So I just click here, the shortcut, line up staff charts, all right. I could also go up here to the menu and just click uh, line ups and dev charts here, but the quicker way is this. Okay, so now I'm in my team screen within the lineups section. And right now I'm looking at the lineups versus right-handed pitchers. Okay, as I can see here, number seven is missing and I also have no primary shortstop. So currently this list is set to pitchers. Uh, this is because I just played around and was on the pitching screen previously. So I just set this to batters and I select a shortstop. Let's have a look. All right, I have Johnny Peralta or Alimidis Diaz. I think I'll go with Diaz. I just drag and drop him here into my dev chart. And as you can see, automatically my number seven spot was filled as well with Mr. Diaz. This is because up here I have the auto sync lineups and dev charts enabled. So whenever I do changes here, it automatically updates the lineup, which is pretty handy. So uh, I think I want Molina hitting seven instead of Deer. So I just exchanged them via drag and drop. Okay, so this lineup is set. All right. Now, what was the other thing we were supposed to take care of? I think it was somebody was on the DL who's ready to activate it. All right. So let's go to Rusters and Transactions. And then I click here on the disable the sub tab. And here I can see on the left hand side is my active roster and on the right hand side is my disabled list. There are many, many players on the disabled list right now. It's early in the season and those are all those players who were injured during spring training or the off season or the prior season. But here I have Mr. Tyler Lyons, a relief pitcher. And if I leave my mouse over his name, there is this uh, quick info pop up 
and I can see he's a three-star player, which is pretty decent. And I probably want him on my active roster. Okay, so I have a look over here and I say, see, here's, for example, Mr. Sigrist, and he's only a one and a half star player, although he has a very, very good stuff rating. But I think I want to replace Sigrist with Lions. So what I will do now is check if I can simply demote Mr. Secret and Secrets to the minus. So I have a look at the legend here. Uh, a star means he's on the secondary roster. Of course he is because he's also on the active roster. And a plus means he's out of minor league options. But there is no plus next to his name, so I can easily demote him. So what I'm going to do is I right click, go to transaction, and I demote him to AAA Memphis. He will not be happy about this. Probably his morale will, will drop big time. But I mean, I have different things to worry about right now. So I just demote him. All right, he's gone. Now up here it says I've got 24 out of 25 players, so I have one spot available. I click on Mr. Lines, drop him over here, and voila, there he is. Okay, so he's now in my bullpen, but I haven't assigned any role to him yet, so I will take care of that now. I go to pitching, and here I have my pitching screen. On the left side, I have the starting rotation, and here I have the bullpen. So at the bottom, we have Tyler Lines with no role specified. In this drop down here, for his primary role, I can either assign him to the closer role, to a setup role, a specialist role, for example. Just uh, I want him just to face left handed uh, pitchers, uh, sorry, left handed hitters, of course. Or middle relief, long relief, emergency starting pitching, or I have no special role. But I think I'll assign him the specialist role and it automatically sets the usage option versus left handed. So that's exactly what I like. And as a secondary role, I just assign him to a middle relief. Okay, so primarily when I play out games or simulate games, the AI will try to use Tyler Lines as a left handed specialist, but Every once in a while, if there is need, he will also use him in normal middle relief. Okay, that's that. So the next thing is let's return to the rasters and transaction tabs and I'll show you the different sub tabs. We've already been on the disabled list, but there's also one minor leagues. And in these different boxes are pre-selected minor leagues teams now, but I also can select or change the contact content of each box. So I can go down here and, for example, select uh, a rookie league team. Or if I go over here again, I can select an international complex, for example. All right. Let's go to the waivers and DFA. Here, if I want to demote a player, for example, who is out of minor league options, I need to put him on waivers first and he has to clear waivers before I can demote him. The next one is trade status. Here I can put players on the trading block via drag and drop. So for example, if I don't want Mr. Wainwright to remain on my team and I want to get trade offers, I can drag and drop him over here, but his morale will probably suffer because of that. So I'll just leave him alone for now. Down here, I can drop the players which I think are definitely untouchable and I don't want any offers from the AI for these players. So, but this list is currently uh, empty. And also, I could also put players on a not interested list here. For example, if the AI always offers me the same players and I say, all right, listen, I don't really want this player. And so I just can right click on him and then put him on the not interested list. Okay, the next one is the playoff roster. This is not something we have to worry about right now, but in case our team makes the playoffs, I can set up my playoff roster here. Then we have the international complex. And here are players which are still very, very young and still too young to play in the minor leagues or not advanced enough. And in the case that our scout, who's currently, uh, I don't know where he is, but uh, he's scouting foreign nations and in the case that he discovers an interesting player and signs him to a minor league contract, he will be automatically assigned to the international complex. 
Okay, that's those transactions. Let's have a look at the strategy tab. Here we have the overall team strategy. Um, right now, everything is set to neutral because I am also the manager. I'm not only the GM, but also the manager in this case. So what I can do here is select the timing for those strategy settings and also the score. So for example, let's say it's late in the game and it is tied. And then I want my players don't steal any bases at all. I don't want them to run in the third out or waste any out. So I say, don't, don't do it. All right. Okay. So this is one example. Or for example, if it's a close game and it's pretty late, I want my starting pitchers to get the quick hook. That's one of the possibilities. So you can set all those depending on timing and also depending on score, which is a pretty powerful instrument to uh, tell the AI how it has to handle your team when you are simulating games and not playing them out manually. Okay. There is another thing which is pretty useful. It's uh, setting a global pitch count limit for starting pitchers. And uh, currently I don't have a pitch count limit, but if I want to prevent injuries, I would probably set this to 100 or 110 if I'm really, really careful, but I'm leaving this alone now. So every once in a while, starting pitchers will throw like 120 pitches. Okay, that's the strategy, the overall strategy, but there's also individual player strategy. So for example, if I have a player, let's say Dexter Fowler, if I want him to steal more bases than the rest of the team relative to my normal uh, team strategy setting for stealing bases, I can set this here, for example. I say, all right, I want him to really run wild, for example. And there are two modes for individual player strategies. One is um, adjusting to team strategy settings. So this is always relative to the setting or override the team strategy setting. So when I say, all right, don't steal or steal very, very few bases, even when I've set my team to run wild completely, uh, this single player will now override the setting and steal no bases at all, essentially. Okay, for pitchers, let's select a pitcher up here. I just grab Carlos Martinez, I drag and drop down here. Right now I can set certain things for Carlos Martinez, for example, his hook setting, his individual, or I can enter an individual pitch limit, or I can force a certain role on him that the AI will then use when I tell the AI to set up my team, for example. There are other settings, for example, um, in case this player is on the minor league and uh, I want him to lock to the current minor league team. For example, if I have a prospect who's in, in double A and I have the AI to set up um, my minor league teams usually, but I want the AI to keep this player where he is currently, I'll just enable this option. But obviously currently Mr. Martinez is not on the minor league team, so I'll just leave this alone. And also I can bench a player for X days. Uh, this can be useful, for example, if a player has a day-to-day -day injury, but I don't want him to uh, enter any games, and but I don't want him to put him on the DL either. So I just would use that option and enter what example, for example, three days in here, if he's day to day for three days. Good. Now let's talk about trades and signing free agents. These options can be found here in the league menu and I can go over here, transactions, for example, free agents, I can find here in the free agent tab. And if I want to make an offer for a free agent, for example, now I have listed this or sorted this list by power. If I want uh, another power hitter, for example, Willy Mopena is available and uh, my scout thinks he has a 60 power, which is pretty decent. I can go on here, right click and I say, all right, offer him a contract. And then I would get to the contract negotiation screen this is a screen we will probably cover later, but it's pretty straightforward. 
So I'll just go back. Speaking of this list, these lists are pretty powerful. Up here, I can select the category of ratings or statistics that I want the list to display, but I also can customize it. For example, in this case, I want the list also to show a few basic betting stats. I just go up here, betting stats. I tell him, all right, give me a bet, give me home runs, give me RBIs, average, OBP, and slugging. Okay. And then those statistics were added to the list. This is pretty handy. And I call then, for example, if I want the list to display last year's numbers, I would go to split. Here are all the different statistical splits that are available. And one of them up here or here right in the middle is last year. So I could then, for example, sort this list by home runs in the last year. So I can see Coco Crisp, who's still a free agent, uh, he had 13 home runs and 446 at-bats last year. Okay. There are also international amateurs free agents available uh, once they have been announced. I think this uh, signing period starts sometime in June. Post the players in case you have any foreign leagues uh, in your game. And you can also review your pending offers and you can also check the upcoming free agents for next season. All right, waiver wire, who's currently on the waiver wire. This is pretty useful if you want to uh, get quality players for cheap. Every once in a while, there will be some decent players on the waiver wire where you can just roll the dice on them and just try to get them from the other team and then maybe you found something useful. Now let's have a look at player trades. At first, this screen may be a little bit confusing, but um, once you know how to use it, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, the first team, St. Louis Cardinals, is automatically selected because it's my team. And here I can see how much cash I have available and how much budget space I have available. Okay, over here, I can select a second team. Let's say I want to trade with the Detroit Tigers. I can see now the Detroit Tigers team focus is neutral, so they are not rebuilding, but they are also not in win now mode. Our team focus is neutral as well, by the way. And now I can draw, drag and drop players into this little box here. But first I need to check out and find out where I have my weaknesses. This little box down here indicates that. Okay, the S up here indicates those are the strengths and weaknesses of my starters. And P is for prospects. Here I can see where my minor league system is thin. So for example, I don't have any third base prospects in my system. All right, so where are my weaknesses? Probably on first base. Just for the fun of it, I'll try to trade for Miguel Cabrera. Let's try that. There you go. Okay, so Miguel Cabrera is now selected. Let's see who will I offer. Hmm. Let's go for prospect here. This list again, you can click on here and select what kind of players you want to display in this list. For example, uh, any minor league players from your different minor leagues teams, but you can also select prospects. Okay, and now I can sort this by potential. Scroll up. And for example, I could offer Harrison Bader, who is a decent center field prospect. I drop him here. All right. Oh, it tells me Miguel Cabrera exercises his 10 and 5 rule to veto any trade. So Mr. Cabrera doesn't want to be traded. That's too bad. Okay, I just remove him, click on remove. I just pick a random different player. Let's go with, uh, let's. I always liked a defensive wizard, so let's get Jose Iglesias. Okay. And now I have a valid trade set up, and now I get feedback from the other team. In this case, the Detroit Tigers general manager, Ala Villiers, says, there is not enough here for me. Please offer a little bit more. And my assistant GM, though, thinks, ah, oh, this is not fair at all. We're not getting much in return. So he's not a fan of this trade. But... Um, I want Iglesias on my team. So what I will do now is I click this button, make this trade work now. 
the AI will now scan its team looking or scan my team looking for one single player who would make this trade work for them. So I do this. Okay, and here's a list of players. If I add those to the trade, you will be happy. The opposing team will be happy. All right. So here's one I can probably part with. Mr. Tommy Farm, he is. Where is he? Oh, he's on my active roster, but I don't know. He's a one star player, so I just add him. All right. And now the reaction is, oh, there's a lot to like in this offer for me. Okay, so what I can do now up here is complete trade. And once I click that, all right, the trade is completed. So, and the players that I have received are in my designated for assignment area. Okay. Then I also got a message, which is probably a fan reaction. Okay, the fans are not happy that I let Tommy Farm go, so he was probably a local favorite. Still, I go to the rosters and transactions. I go to the waivers and DFA. Here is uh, Jose Iglesias. I can drag and drop him to my active roster. There's one spot free now. So now my active roster is set up again, but I want to have a role for Mr. Iglesias. So again, I go to my lineups page and instead of just randomly clicking around here, I will now just ask my bench coach for everything. So I go to the available actions menu and there is an option, ask bench coach for all devs, charts and lineups. I click this and then my bench coach sets everything up. Okay. Now I return to home and that's it. Those are the basics of managing a team in out of the park baseball. In the next tutorial, I will go and play a game out for you and show you exactly what kind of options you have when actually managing one single game. Okay. See you later.